What's up everybody? This is Joe. Hey, I've decided to do a quick series of videos tonight covering the blueprint for the ICND-1 exam, the 100-101 exam specifically. And uh, I decided I'm going to make one video for every major topic of the blueprint and just kind of go through with you guys, maybe offer you a little bit more insight, breaking things down. Some of these topics are very straightforward. Other of them uh, are a little bit vague in how they're worded. And, and then there's some that I think should just be highlighted with a giant yellow highlighter pen, but Cisco does not give you that advantage. So I want to talk a little bit about the specifics of this blueprint. So I'm just going to jump right in here to uh, the first section, which is operation of IP data networks. If you don't know where to get the blueprint, I'll put it here in the description section of the video. But if you go to cisco.com slash go slash ccna and you click on the ICND-1 exam, you can go check out the exam topics and you can grab this PDF. I would even recommend when you're studying, the first thing you should do is pull down this PDF, print this thing out, and make sure you're going over it regularly and making sure you're checking off that you know each one of these topics very, very well. All right, so let's jump in. Operation of IP data networks first section. Recognize the basic purpose and functions of various network devices such as routers, switches, bridges, and hubs. Okay, so seems pretty straightforward. Let me give you the major highlights. You obviously want to know what a router is, what a switch is, what a bridge is, and what a hub is. Okay, think about what the differences are between these devices. Okay, what I mean by that, think about where they sit in the OSI model, first of all. So for example, a router is a layer 3 device that routes packets, whereas a switch is a layer 2 device that switches frames, okay? Whereas a hub is a layer 1 device that pretty much has no intelligence. It just repeats whatever uh, comes into it, right? So you want to understand where they fit in the OSI model, what their basic functions are, and how they work. Okay, so for example, a router routes packets between different networks and it separates broadcast domains. That would be a good example of a brief description of a router. Okay, 1.2, select the components required to meet a given network spec. This kind of really goes back to 1.1. Okay, if you know what these various different devices do in a network, if I were to give you a scenario uh, you should be able to take those various different devices and based on the scenario tell me which devices I would need to make that scenario work. So I think 1.1 and 1.2 kind of go hand in hand. 1.3 identify common applications and their impact on the network. I think what this is saying here is just know what the basic application layer protocols are and a little bit about how they function. So for example, what is Telnet? What is SSH or Secure Shell? What's HTTP? What's ICMP? Uh, what's FTP? All these various different uh, protocols, you should at least know the basics of how they function. Uh, perhaps what protocol and port number they use, all very good things to know. So pretty much a lot of memorization on, on that topic there, but you're going to want to know some of the in-depth as well as far as at least describing the basics of each one of these. Okay, 1.4, the purpose and basic operation of the protocols in the OSI and TCP IP models. This is huge. This is one of those that should be highlighted in a giant yellow highlighter pen. Okay, the OSI and TCP IP models, one of the biggest topics on the ICND-1 exam. Okay, I would say that and subnetting are the two huge areas that you need absolute mastery in. So don't just glaze that one over. You want to not only know the OSI model in your sleep, okay? So remember, application, presentation, session, transport, network, uh, data link, and physical, okay? You want to know that in your sleep. That's right off of the bat. That's an automatic. But then you also have to know what protocols fit at each layer. Okay, so if I were to talk about IP, we should know IP is a network layer 3 protocol. 
so that's where it sits in the stack. What about TCP or UDP? We should know that's a layer 4 transport layer protocol in the OSI model, so on and so forth. You're also going to want to know if you know where a protocol fits in the OSI model, where does it sit in the corresponding TCP IP model? Because remember, they are different things, but the TCP IP model has layers that overlap with the OSI model. So you want to make sure you keep that straight. So basically, mastery in that subject, again, yellow highlighter pen territory. Okay, 1.5, predict the data flow between two hosts. That seems a little bit vague, so let's kind of dig into that. If we were to give you a diagram um, of a basic network, okay, and we were to say PCA, wherever it is on the network, wants to ping PCB. I want you guys to be able to explain that so well that you could explain it to a five-year-old. Okay, think basics. Start at the very basics and think about things like what's the very first thing that has to happen? We're going to assume we're working in an Ethernet environment. What's the very first thing that has to happen? Maybe things like ARP. What about sending it to my default gateway? And then what's going to happen once it gets to the default gateway? Maybe it's going to route the packet based on the destination IP address in the packet and based on the routing table in the router. Things like that. You want to be able to basically trace the flow of that packet. So imagine that you are doing a trace route of that packet you should be able to, in your mind, think about every single hop along that network path and, and basically describe what's going on, okay? One thing to look out for there, you want to understand if PCA is pinging PCB, does the source and destination IP address ever change along the path? Well, generally speaking, unless we're talking about NAT, no, it doesn't, okay? Layer 3 address should basically stay the same. But what about the Layer 2 address, the MAC addresses? Well, the destination MAC address could very well change at each hop along the way. Probably will. Okay, these are things you want to understand. So it could be something like that, routing. It could be something with switching. Okay, so maybe we have uh, a bunch of PCs plugged into one or two switches, and they want to know what happens when a broadcast frame gets sent. Right? Which PCs receive the broadcast? Um, which PCs might receive a multicast? Trace the the packet, uh, trace a unicast packet through a switch. Things like that. Okay, 1.6, identify the appropriate media, cables, ports, connectors. This is all about the physical layer and if you know uh, what cables do what and when to use them. Okay, so by that, think about crossover cables, straight through cables, rollover cables, different types of serial cables. Uh, what are they? So you want to understand the theory, the pinouts. Um, you know, for example, in a straight through cable we know we have eight wires and they're connected directly to each other. Pin 1 to pin 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, so on and so forth. But with a crossover cable you're going to want to know that you know, pins 1 and 2 are swapped with 3 and 6. Or a rollover cable, all the uh, the pins are exactly rolled over. They're exactly the opposite on the other end. And then you want to know when to use each of them. Okay, so if you're connecting a PC to a switch, what type of cable do you use? Well, that would be a straight through. What about a PC to another PC directly? Well, that would be a crossover cable. How about a router to a switch, or a switch to a switch, or a router to a router? Think of every possible scenario and understand which is the right cable to use. That's about it here um, for section one of the blueprint. Come on back for section two. We'll dig in here to the LAN switching technologies. Thanks everybody for watching. Hey, subscribe to the channel. Check out the blog over at www.astorinonetworks.com or you can follow me on Twitter at jastorino. Hey, thanks everybody for watching, and I'll see you soon.